So I'm outside the Russian market here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. This is really known as the Tul Tompong market, uh, and the area is uh, Tul Tompong. They call it the Russian market because uh, Russians were shopping here in the 80s. I guess there were some Russian expats that lived here and uh, it got to be famous because the Russians like to come and shop here. There's no Russians here now. I never see any Russians here. It's kind of a rip, kind of misleading actually. They got to change that name. Get rid of the Russian market name. No Tuk Tuk. No Tuk Tuk today. Camera? Yeah, camera. You want to see? <laughs> is somebody looking for you? Sorry. Is somebody looking for you? Yeah. That's why? <laughs> okay, see you. Okay. Have a good day. You too, thanks. This market's known for clothing, uh, bargaining for brand name clothes and uh, knockoff stuff, fake stuff. You, know, you name it, they have it here. Apparently, the, the, they have the best deals here, but it, it's a little bit dark inside, but we'll jump in and see what's uh, happening inside. Got an hour to go before it closes. Okay, so unlike me, you might actually bump into a Russian at the market, but back in the 1980s, most of the expats living in Phnom Penh were from the former Soviet Union, hence the name. It's so dark in here. They have these export markets around Phnom Penh, and uh, you know you can get some deals there the prices are higher you really get the bargains in places like this like you'll find some kind of hidden gem basically you just go up and start digging through the piles here or just tell people your size if you're bigger and then uh, uh, they'll find your sizes for you that's what i do they're accustomed to receiving a lot of tourists so remember to bargain hard but with a smile Uh, they have fans going here. There's no AC in this place. It gets super stuffy. Uh, good market for souvenirs. Anchor beer t-shirts. Like you don't have enough of those already. Oh, she's... You have to watch your feet here. They have these surprise steps if you're not careful you'll just all of a sudden take a dive so lighting is pretty cool familiar looking brands this is like a dessert place they have all these things that they'll put in like a hot soup for you Coconut rice cakes, a classic street food found throughout Cambodia, can be a savory or sweet snack. The way these look, these remind me of takoyaki, the Japanese street snack made with a batter of wheat-based flour and octopus pieces. Kamai rice cakes are typically made with rice flour, coconut milk, chives, and with possibly the addition of palm sugar. So these are rice and coconut cakes. This is a, like a heavy-duty machine, too. Like, this is the real commercial style. I'm definitely curious to find out how these taste. So this is a rice cake, a traditional snack here. And uh, I've seen these in uh, like uh, outdoor night markets, but this one is like the serious, like the griddle thing he's using on there is pretty, uh, pretty cool, pretty serious. So it still feels kind of hot. I'll give it a, I'll give it a little try. 
Mm. Good, it's not like really sweet. It's kind of a nice snack. Kind of creamy in the middle, it's nice. And this is the wet market area here. It's kind of quiet. There's still people selling stuff, but probably busier in the mornings. I'm not buying anything today. I'm just maybe like having a little snack here and there or uh, maybe a coffee. Let's see. Um, this is my last day in Phnom Penh on this trip. I like people that just specialize in one thing, like bananas. Just do one thing and do it well. There he is. I was looking for you. Nice to see you. I came, I came here five years ago. Yeah, so I'm back. I just want to say hi. You're like a celebrity. You're a star. Yeah, yeah. You're here? Yeah. You closed? But the takeaway. Oh, takeaway. Yeah. Okay, well, that's okay. Yeah, I do takeaway, yeah. I'm glad to meet you. Oh, it's nice to see you again. Yeah. And you are, like, I just want to tell my viewers that you are like a celebrity. Like, you are in food magazines around the world and websites and... Uh, and you're such a nice man, so I'm yeah. so glad. I will have some coffee for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, Arkun Mr. Bunareth has been featured in the South China Morning Post, Lonely Planet, and countless travel blogs. Like, this guy is a celebrity. Like, he is known around the world. He's got this little coffee shop here. How long have you been here for? How many years now? Uh, beginning the. 20 to 10, 20, 40 years ago. 40 years ago? Yeah. Wow. For, 40 years in the market. Yeah. Wow. 40 years. He is such a sweet man, and uh, it's late in the afternoon. I know this will probably keep me up all night, but I just could not resist, you know, buying a coffee from him. The best iced coffee in Phnom Penh. And I remember the last time I had it here, my heart was like racing for hours. It's pretty strong, but it is very delicious. Mmm, that's good. So we're gonna also explore uh, the outside of this uh, market area here. It's got a very uh, interesting history to it. So as the inside market starts closing down for the day, the outdoor night market is just getting set up right now so we'll uh check that out in a bit here as well as soon as everybody gets their uh, stall set up they got to do this every day so we've got some noodles some salad rolls there So another thing really interesting about this uh, district or this area here is a lot of foreigners started moving here early on in the last decade because uh, they were looking for cheaper housing. Uh, the, traditionally, the expats live in BKK1 in Phnom Penh. It's a little on the pricey side, or you know, some people found it was. So they looked for other areas, and, and this area here, Tool Tompong, uh, was pretty reasonable. So a lot of foreigners started moving here. And then uh, shortly afterwards, uh, you know, some of them started opening up like restaurants, cafes. Some are, you know, foreigner run. Some are sort of co-foreigner, Khmer run or own. And then, uh, of course, there's uh, just Khmer businesses here as well. So it's really interesting. It's kind of a, um, it's got a lot of character, this area. It's, it's, it's kind of a fusion neighborhood, I'd call it. And, you know, you've got the old, you've got the, the new and the fusion stuff. It's really cool. Oh. 
encore lui, là. Il n'y a pas de Hello. Hello. Chive cakes here. Those look good. These ones look really good. So this is uh, by any means not an unexplored area. Lots of tourists come down here because they've heard of the, the uh, Russian market. And there's some uh, restaurants that are getting some acclaim in this area as well. So tourists find out about that and they come down here. Uh, but it's still a really cool place. Like I said, kind of a fusion neighborhood. Um, traditional stuff, newer stuff. Uh, a little bit of a log jam here. Already I'm eyeing another potential snack here. Okay, I'm getting an education here. Nom pao, right? Nom pao? Nom pao. Okay, I'm going to try one of these. Loading up on carbs here before dinner. Caffeine and carbs, it's great. Okay, this is the dipping sauce. This is a pandan leaf and coconut cream. And I just, I had I had a little nibble of the nong pao, it's really good. It's kind of a, it is a little bit of a sweet pastry, not super sweet. Let's try this with the coconut uh, cream and pandan leaf. Mm. Oh my god, that is so good. I'm gonna get like a num pao ass here. Fried banana num pao ass here, eating too much of this stuff. Oh, this is really good. Oh my god, it was 50 cents. One more. Mm. Oh, that is so good. Definitely feeling a little bit uh, jumped up right now after the caffeine fix and uh, the sweet. So I'm gonna walk around a little bit more, explore a little bit more of the neighborhood here. Already have my dessert plan for later here, but let's stop inside this unique ice cream shop outside the Tool Tompong Market to say hi. Uh, cow milk. You don't use cow milk? Yeah, we don't use cow milk. Uh, we use coconut milk, yes. I know, I love this. I've had this, I've come here um, in five years ago. You had the shop here, I came here, but oh. it was over there. Yes. Small shop, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And, and uh, it's so good and the flavors are amazing. Yes. So I tell everybody to come here. Yes. And especially if you're vegan, you can have this and uh, no worries, no cow milk. Yes, yeah. welcome again, sir. So I love uh, the ice cream here because I, I don't uh, consume dairy products. I really try to stay away from dairy products. And the stuff they make here is with coconut milk. And I asked, there's nothing else they use. There are a couple of flavors they do use cow milk for, but they, they're happy to tell you. I think it's just vanilla and chocolate that they use the cow milk for. But all of the tropical fruit flavors are all vegan. So you can uh, indulge uh, as much as you want if you're vegan. Uh, and you don't have to be vegan to enjoy uh, these flavors like dragon fruit, durian, jackfruit, coconut, so good.
Okay, a bar that sells yogurt. I gotta ask. So, like, uh, this is the you're you're the first bar that I've ever seen that sells yogurt as well. Uh, that's what they say. I come from Turkey, and then uh, we eat yogurt every day. Then um, I actually started uh, selling it, and uh, it's homemade. It's plain. It's natural. It's uh, uh, plastic free, so people like it. Uh, you can tell that there's a lot of foreigners that live in an area of a city uh, in Southeast Asia when you see lots of supermarkets that sell uh, foreign goods, uh, a lot of foreign products. Cocaine. Sugar cane juice. I like that. A lot of expat businesses located in this neighborhood, including an established craft brewery. So, what's your name? Tyler. And you're from Spokane? Yep. And you, you got a brew pub going on here? Yep. We, so uh, tell me a little bit about it, tell the history of the place. Well, we were out living in Cambodia and we decided that we didn't want to go back to our countries. So we tried to figure out what we could do to employ ourselves and we figured why not make beer. At the time there were no breweries out here. Um, uh, like doing craft beer, so uh, we decided to come out and do it. And you're gonna let me have a taste? Yeah, come on. So Tyler is pouring me an IPA right now. I can't wait to try this real brewing. So this is the IPA. Wow, look at this. Indian pale ale. Oh, nice and hoppy. Love that. Where do you get your hops from? Uh, New Zealand, Australia, US. Um, parts of Europe, pretty much all over the world, depending on what style we want to brew, try to get hops from that area. So can I ask you something as far as, um, you know, starting up something like that, is it a lot more doable for, you know, young guys to try to do something like that here than back in oh, Washington? Yeah, for sure. Um, I actually had a buddy who started a brewery and the amount of capital he needed to start up versus how much we need to start up was uh, quite a bit, and quite a difference. Like, I think we started up on less than 10 percent what he did wow and and like uh like doing the paperwork stuff like that to set yeah, up a business here easy. was it it wasn't hard uh, it wasn't too hard it's just the taxes are are annoying but other than that it's pretty pretty easy well cheers man thanks yeah. so much no worries. yeah so name of the distillery again uh real brewing and distilling and you're in chol tompong yeah Chol tompong area well that tyler's a pretty cool guy that was a really uh cool story so let's keep moving on here. So I'm starting to get hungry now. So I'm gonna head for dinner and I'm gonna check out this place uh, that I've been to before. It's quite good. It's called Nessat Seafood. And they ship in the seafood from the coast here. So I'm looking forward to that. I think I'm gonna have squid with camp pot peppercorns. Hello. I find this neighborhood, unlike other areas of Phnom Penh, is a little more pedestrian friendly with some quieter streets and lanes to explore. So I think I'm gonna go with the Kampot pepper. They give you different choices here for sauces. You got tamarind and basil. That sounds pretty good. Ground lemongrass with capsicum. And onion, chili and coriander. I'm gonna go with Kampot pepper. And I'll, I'm gonna go with the squid, I think, and a large. Oh, that smells so good. <laughs> You don't always get to see your own meal being cooked. This is really a treat. I love those Kampot peppers. That looks and smells amazing. Akun.
more those green peppercorns. So good. Just ordering uh, the vegan ice cream, red dragon and durian. And she asked me twice if I like durian. I love durian. The red dragon fruit. So good. I gotta have a little bit of scoop of durian. Gotta try, I gotta have a little scoop of durian. Durian and some red dragon fruit. Mm. Oh, <laughs> it's really good. Well, I can't believe two months has gone by just like that here in Cambodia, but I've had such an amazing time, learned so much more about this wonderful, magical place and all the beautiful people. And it was so nice to see Mr. Bunareth again after all these years and meeting some new friends today here in Tul Tampong, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, please. More videos. And I hope you enjoy the series from Cambodia here over the last two months. Uh, more from East Asia, Southeast Asia, and South Asia. So subscribe to the channel now from Phnom Penh. This is John Sabo. Peace and over and out. So I am at the famous Russian market known as Tul Tompong. That's the real name of this area and the market. But uh, you know, they, uh, they can shut up. All right, take two. So I'm outside the Russian market here, uh, really known as Tol Tumpong to locals. Tol Tumpong, Tol Tumpong, Tol Tumpong.